Yup. If you're like me, you're wondering the same thing. How the hell do we get here? How do we let things get this bad? TK used to be one of the good guys, but I guess the saying is true. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And in this case, 2K is 100% the fucking villain in this story. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how 2K fell from grace. Starting with chapter 1, the demo era. NBA 2K12, NBA 2K13, NBA 2K14, NBA 2K15, and NBA 2K16. Now, it might be hard for some of the younger fans of the game to understand, but there used to be a point where every single game just about had a demo. RPG, FPS, rhythm based, action adventure, survival horror, platformer, you name it. If it was being released, then odds are it probably had a demo. Now in more recent years, companies have stopped releasing demos in favor of just outright having, you know, closed betas, open betas, alphas, play tests, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, which is better for them. You know, uh, they get to gauge people's reaction to the actual game, not just a small, tiny fraction or section, you know, while also having them pretty much, you know, beta test or, or you know, QA the game for them, you know, finding any glitches or game breaking things. And then, of course, this is all for free. So, you know, we're basically doing the job that they pay other people to do, you know, all in the name of getting early access to the game. And the people don't really care because everybody wins. The devs win. They get what they want, the data, the stats, and, you know, game-breaking problems, glitches, bugs. And the player wins because the player gets to play the game early. We all got to get a feel for the game. How we you know, find out what we think is going to be strengths, where there are going to be weaknesses, what might be the best loadout or badge or attachment or whatever to, you know, use or play or go for versus, you know, what seemed kind of weak or trash when you played it. Now, that might all change depending on when the full actual game comes out, but obviously, everybody's happy with what they're getting, you know, and more importantly, in most cases, it was still free, like how demos were, you know, um, obviously, this doesn't apply to, like, closed betas or betas that require pre-orders, which is nasty work, by the way, and for as much hate that 2K received, they were one of the companies that didn't pass off their beta testing on their fan base, at least, again, not yet, anyway. So we were still receiving demos and we were still happy. Now the demos weren't super impressive. You were only able to use like two teams, usually like the NBA Finals matchup from the previous year. And you were only able to play like two minute quarters. So you didn't get to see all the different signature animations. You didn't get to see the different animation triggers. And you didn't get to activate all the badges because you're only going by those players and those players might not have all the badges, you know? You might not get to see all the shooting badges if you're playing with like a team like the Charlotte Hornets or the Spurs because they didn't have like really good sharpshooters versus if you play, I don't know, one demo where you got Golden State and you got like Steph Curry, you got Clay, you got a bunch of different shooters that will have like, you know, shooting badges and whatnot. So again, but even then, you know, it was still a nice taste of what was going to come from the actual game when you got your hands on that. You know, so you got hands-on experience, and the demo was widely available to everyone who had access to, like, you know, PSN, Xbox Live, or Steam, or whatever. Now, also, I think one of the best things about those demos, too, was that those demos were also going based on, like, almost a fully polished version of the game. Because those, those were usually getting out, like, around May, June-ish, or whatever, if I remember correctly, maybe April, like, at the start of the playoffs, so... You know, you were getting like almost a finalized version of the game. It wasn't like you were getting like some like really, really early beta version of the game that's like barely working that you get to play test or, you know, see a piece of. Like you were getting like pretty much the finished game, which was nice to get our hands on, you know. So uh, that was a thing. Uh, and then we got 2K17. Now, the reason why 2K17 was so special was because it ushered in a new era in the NBA 2K franchise, which leads us to Chapter 2, the Prelude Era, NBA 2K17, NBA 2K18, and NBA 2K19. Now, the Prelude Era was also a part of that golden era of 2K, even though it houses one of the worst, most hated 2K games of all time. Yes, I'm looking at you, NBA 2K18. 
this was still an era where we not only got demos, but we were able to get previews. Now, basically, a prelude was just like a short prequel that lets you create your My Career player, play around in the builder, uh, you know, experience a short uh, 15, 20, maybe 30 minute introduction into My Career with a brief story where your progression transferred over to the full game if you choose to do so but the option was still up to you if you choose that you wanted to just make a whole new player you could do that as well as you could transfer your guy over from the prelude over to your new player or whatever when you got the full game but the most important part was that we still got an early look at the game as preludes usually came out like a week or two before the game uh so even though things were still technically worse we still had some kind of option, you know, um, of playing and seeing the actual game before it came out, which leads us to our next chapter, chapter three, the Builder Era, NBA 2K20, NBA 2K21, and NBA 2K22. Now, these were 2Ks that were part of what I call the Builder Era, and I call it that because this was the era of 2K where they didn't even give us preludes anymore. You know, I talked about how things started to get worse. Well, that was one of those things. We, we didn't get preludes anymore after this. All we got were builders now, which just lets you create builds. And then eventually it got to the point where there was a limit cap on how many builds you could test. So players didn't have to create a whole new account, you know, just to get more. You know, uh, meaning if you tested and played around and made one build of each position, right? Let's say you made point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. You were essentially locked out of the builder after that. And the only way to get around that was by making a whole new account, which is just insane for a builder. Where you weren't even playing anything. There was no actual gameplay. It was just going in the builder, selecting your position, your weight, your height, your wingspan, and then just playing with the attributes and just seeing what badges and what attributes you have and what, what your build name would be. Like, you know, like, it's just insane to think that all we did was just create and play around with sliders and stats. And even then, we got a lock on that for how, you know, a cap on how many we could make. It wasn't like we were even getting the, the build testing game anymore, I don't believe. You know, we were just creating builds and just testing sliders and stats and locking us out of that. Now, at the time, we probably were thinking that things couldn't get any worse than that, you know, as I describe it. Uh, but we were certainly mistaken because now we've entered our last and final and current era of NBA 2K. And that brings us to chapter four, the you will get nothing and you will be happy era. NBA 2K23, NBA 2K24, NBA 2K25, so on, and the foreseeable future of NBA 2K franchise. Uh, bugs and glitches take forever to patch for anything involving, you know, scamming or, you know, massively printing or earning VC gets patched you know, or fixed immediately. Hot fix. Not even a patch that has to go out for that. Game is literally tailored to make you spend more and more money each year. Then there is the lack of features that they take out from each yearly iteration only to just add back two to three years down the line and pretend like it's brand new, you know, spanking content or whatever. Now, I would ask you, what game does that sound like? And if you're, you, you know what? If you answer NBA 2K, you are right, that is NBA 2K. And to top things all off, we no longer get anything anymore. No more demos, no more preludes, no more builders, nothing, nada. You will get absolutely nothing and you will love it. You will pre-order it and you will spend more money than you did last year on it. You will make posts and threads, uh, you know, complaining on social media sites like Reddit and Twitter and YouTube about it. And then mid-year, you will swear on everything you love that you're finally done with it. But when that yearly cycle comes to an end and untrustworthy YouTubers start posting these clickbaity videos about the next iteration, you will find yourself clicking on it and falling right back into that cycle about it all over again. Unless, well, unless we start voting with our wallets and tell 2K to fuck off. But what do I know? I'm just an untrustworthy YouTuber posting clickbaity videos. I'm out, guys. Catch y'all in the next one.